uh, pound New Zealand, it says we're coming down right there. It's making a turn, all right? It's outside of the wedge right now, okay? It went out, it's been, it's tested this so many times, it's unbelievable. But a break of this support would give us an opportunity to the downside. Let's go um, flip this, 155 pip ATR. So you can see we got plenty of room. What do the three musketeers say? We're going sideways. Now we're trying to turn it. We might try to turn it. We're closing up to turn it. We've already turned it. We've already turned it, all right? So if we get a break, hook and go with this support right here, there's the trade opportunity right there. And trade one will be the break, hook and go to there, to this support was a T, break the T3, that's trade two, break the FIB and the support, that's trade three. Pound New Zealand down, all right? Now, that gives us a little hint on the Euro New Zealand, all right? It's about to happen, by the way. They're pushing through right now, uh, about to happen. So if you like it, uh, go place your entry orders. Your entry orders have to go in before you ever make a market order. There she goes. All right, she's pushing through. Pound New Zealand is now pushing through. Remember, if you're going to take this trade, you already got your entry orders in. Uh, all right, so there you see, they're pushing through. There's the break. What are we getting for information, all right? Are we really wanting to do this? What does the chart say? Yeah, we're going down. We've got a zero line break and a T3 break right there, right there, all right? Got a close and reverse. I got a close and reverse. I got exhaustion wick, another close and reverse, and another close and reverse. Four close and reverses to the downside. Do you think they're trying to sell it? Then a white dot comes in as a big boy pushes it, all right? It says, let's get this thing going. It's getting late. All right, so what do you got? One, two, three T30s down here, all right? So you wait for the break and the hook, all right? So you know you got these down here, all right? You got one below here, at below, below 93.50, and you got one below the fib right there. So there's two positions in here. Now, you got, you're going to look for another position as an entry order. You're going to wait for this one to break and hook. And once that breaks, you put another entry order below that the support right there, and you take the market order there. So it goes down here. What have I got? One, two, two, one, two, three, four positions down. It goes 100 pips. Trade one makes me 100 pips. Trade two makes me 80 pips. Trade three makes me 70 pips. And trade four makes me, looks like uh, 60 pips. And there you go. Add them up. Oh, gee, 350 pips on that little trade. Sweet. Nice. All right. Then you're doing it in micros. That means you're not making a lot of money, but you are making pips. Eventually, you get to the 65% uh, rate and you go, man, I'm winning 65% of the time. My average pip capture because I'm doing this is over 35 pips. Maybe I can fund my account and start trading minis, all right? Or maybe I trade 30 micros, all right? Which gives me lots of opportunity because I can I can divvy them up. I can put 17 off here and take 12 off here and put eight off here, and put nine more on. I got all these opportunities of trading 30, 30 micros. Lots of opportunity to, to uh, mix it up a little bit. Right? They're not successful. They're pushing through and they weren't successful. That's a pro. So they're probing for, they're looking, it's called hunting stops. They probe for the hunt, the stops. They did not find any. That's why they're back up here. If they had found stops in here, the candle would have kept on going to the downside. So they didn't find stops there. So now they know the next time they come down, they're going to have to go lower than this because there are no stops here. So the next push to the downside has got to probe this one. And if it does probe that and does pick up the entry orders, it just goes. All right, so all right, I'm still looking for a break, hook, and go up here. All right, but now I have a new piece of information which tells me place the entry order, you know, four, five, six pips below this line right there. All right? All right, now I have plenty of room to the 93.50 there, and a break of the 93.50 gives me that trade right there. See, so I can adjust this. Maybe at only three positions, one micro, one uh, market order, two entry orders. All right, I can maybe do it that way. All right. So there are lots of opportunities and, um, and um, uh, strategies to trade every single trade. Which one matches your psychology? That's the key. key. And which one matches the, mar the market, the, the uh, risk tolerance that you personally have? What is your um, um, attachment to money? All right. So Pound New Zealand is, there it is. All right. All right. So there we go. All right. Any, who, anybody in Pound New Zealand? There it is, right there. See him? Now they're hitting that. Now they're hitting sell stops like crazy. See him? All right. So you got Daniel in, you got Ashley in, you got Abdullah in, you got Dean in. Okay. So, so see, it's a live trade. Andy's in. See there? 
And if you're new, you go, well, I didn't hear you call trade. I said, is anyone ready? When you're ready and you and you decide that that's what you like, then you're in. Tom's in. See, lots of traders in. They don't they don't need me to do this, right? So got a live trade here this morning on that. We'll see how traders do on Monday. Today is the last day of the week. We'll be in here. All right. So here we go. All right. And trade two has already gone in. See that? Trade one and trade two. What did we do? All right. Go to a 240. And we came into this triangle going down. That means we're going to come down. Uh, all right. Good, Dean. Okay. There you go. All right. So you got a bunch of bottoms here. So you got to, you know, you got to watch that. Those are all bounce points. That's places where the market could bounce. All right. They, why? How do we know that? Because they already bounced. One, two, three, four, five. Five times they bounced here. We're headed to the bounce point. What should we do? Well, now we know that. We move our stop when we hit the bounce point. All right. So you can see that bounce point's right in here. You can put, drop, put a line on it and say, okay, bounce point. Now I know where to move my stop. All right. And you see, they already bounced right there. Uh, let's see. Now, typically, if they want to break through that, a big boy will come in again just to push it through, to make sure it gets through. Uh, and she goes. Those are all. Those are all orders coming in. Every time you see that candle pop, it's an order. Which way are the orders coming in? To the downside. Is that good for me? Yeah, I'm a seller. Uh, I'm a seller. That's good for me. Keep going, baby. Click that 93.50 out so my next trade goes in. All right. Okay, you're just pips away from moving your stop. And well, you got something to do here when you hit that blue line. All right. I didn't put the blue line on. Then you're not trading, you're gambling. Don't be a gambler, be a trader. Close here. Two pips to go and you move your stop to break even. Why don't I take, just take the pips? Because that's not the plan. That would be like a soccer player getting a ball, headed towards the goal, and he just stops. And he says, I'm done. And he said, why are you done? Well, I moved the ball forward. That was my only job. No, the job is to get to the goal, right? That's, that's the way that thinking works. Would you do that if you're a soccer player, a rugby player, or a lacrosse player, or a basketball player? Uh, you wouldn't do that stuff. See, they're having trouble with that line. See, the more you do the charts, the more you realize they're going to have trouble with that line. I see it because I put the line on. I watch them. They are leery as can be of that line right there. Because everybody knows that's the bounce point, all right? So therefore, a big boy is going to have to push it through most likely. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't, then it's going back up. That's why I got to go to break even because the risk side of this is it goes back up like this one did right here, which will stop me out. But if I don't, but I can, I'll finally get stopped out for break even because the trade isn't going to go anywhere. All right. But I'm not sitting here trying to scalp these 10, 12, 15 pips in here. That's crazy. No, I, I'm, I'm in for the, tra the trade. I commit to the process. All right. Will it always work? No, it won't always work, but it'll work statistically, and that's all you care about. If I do this 300 times and I win 260, uh, will I be great? All right, so, Bill, you either win or you learn. So you learn today. See that? Yeah, and you already figured it out. I was greedy. I put my second trade due close to the bounce point, but more careful, I wouldn't have had that whipped in loss. There you go. So now we learn. We learn something. All right. You know, and how do we know what to do? Okay. When you got big candles here, all right, then you got to stay a long way away. When you got little candles like that, all right, then you can be tight right here. So in this case, a little candle there, you should have been tight, Bill. And this is called the market. The market's going to take 25% of your trades away just because it can. All right. But understanding that it's okay if you take 25% of my trades away, as long as I can trade at 65% or better, my losses will never overcome my, my wins, right? And things like break-evens never affect you at all.
Yeah, exactly right. And of course, we know that's right brain stuff, right? Fear and greed is right brain. Right? You see, they're trying to push it. See the arrow coming in to, as, as they're trying to get it to go again. Right? You popped an arrow there. Right? That, that means an order, a big order came in and uh, oh, better than the last couple of them. And you saw the arrow show up, but the arrow sticks. You know, some big money is trying to there. Came, just popped on there for a second. Right? They're trying to, they're still, what's the chart saying? There it is again. What are they trying to tell you? We're trying to make this thing happen. We're trying to keep it going. That's what we're doing. Good. All right. I got stopped out on this thing with a break even. Okay, now what do I want to do? I, I, my entry orders are down here. And if I got wicked in here and up we go, I go put the, the, the order in again below here, 93.40. And then the next one at 93.24 and hold for the target. They're trying to whipsaw you. Yeah. They know exactly where you are, Bill. They, they want those five minis you've got going, right? They want those so bad. <laughs> of course not. They don't even know it. They just know, they know the statistics. I know they hate you. <laughs> All right, starting to see the right signs, you see? You're starting to see a close and reverse starting. Maybe that's a close and reverse. I don't know. Maybe just going down. But we're seeing the right signs, right? That's what, that's what you can't, this is why when you get a couple of trades on, you have got a lot of work to do because every candle has to talk to you. And it's going to tell you something that you either need to watch or do, right? Every candle is going to tell you that. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of work, right? But this is, this is when trading is fun, especially when you're winning, of course. But in the beginning, you may not be winning, but you still have to have fun doing this thing. And that's why you trade micros, where it doesn't hurt you. Oh, we're going to lose 30 pips. Well, how much is that? Okay, that's 30 dimes. That's $3. Okay, I won't go to, I won't go to McDonald's today and get a Big Mac. Uh, what town did you end up uh, moving to in Colorado, Bill? What town? You're missing all that great heat we have down here in San Antonio, 106, 107. So what's the town in Colorado? Pueblo West. Oh, pretty, yeah. Oh, you're in the southern? Southern part of the state, down by Telluride and all that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty hot there. I owned a restaurant in Estes Park, Colorado. So I shifted. it. I was a chef and owner of the restaurant. And I lost my restaurant to the Big Thompson Flood in 1976. Had 10 inches of rain in three hours. Wiped out all the roads into Estes Park. Totally wiped out. Spent the next uh, few days uh, over in a little town called Blackhawk across over the mountain and uh, collecting bodies and putting, we didn't have any body bags yet because they couldn't get in there. So we just put them in big old trash cans, one on the top, one on the bottom. Found people 30 feet up in the, in the, uh, in the trees. Yeah. Yeah, big boy wicked me out on my west <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. <coughs> so, so I left there, went to um, Conway, New Hampshire and uh, opened another restaurant at the base of a ski slope, Mount Cranmore. And sold that out after one season and headed to Colorado. I was on my way to Colorado. And uh, I took the southern route and stayed a couple of days too long in New Orleans. And ended up in Austin, Texas with 17 bucks left in my pocket. I wasn't going to get to Colorado in 17. Uh, I, I graduated from high school there, Larry, and then um, left and then let's see, 76, that would have been 77. Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting on this one.
So this is North Conway right there. Pretty town. Big hotel there. Huge. <laughs> There you go. And uh, my hotel, my uh, other restaurant in Colorado was in the Stanley Hotel. Right there. Uh, where there's two buildings, three buildings here. Let's see if I can find the three buildings. Or the third building. There it is. There. Our restaurant was here. Right there, weren't any of these condos up here. I used to walk up here after after well, after work or during the day when I take a break. Met a mountain lion up here one day, and I also got attacked by a golden eagle. I was too close to their nest and came down and hit me on the head. Crazy. Uh, I was young. There we go. I've been a yeah. Well, 28 times across the United, 27 times across the United States. Lived, I was in 28 schools before I graduated high school. Not a good life. It was bad. There's a the close in reverse of everybody. They're pushing it through. So. There you go. We'll try again. Let's see if that pound squishy did anything. Yeah, they're done. See, they're done. So we made the right decision, right? Because it's two European currencies. They don't have enough power to get there. If they don't have all the participants leave, they don't have enough power to get down here. So I know that. So I walk away from that. Now, pound New Zealand, everybody's got uh, staying power because they know that the, they're going to pass the book to the New Zealand and Aussie guy to, uh, in a couple hours. So their job is to try to keep this going so that when they pass the book, all right, that's what it's called. In fact, their their uh, broker station is called Book Trader. Right, Book Trader, because in the old days it was a book. It was literally a a, hand, um, a book, you know. But now they created software, but they called it Book Trader right there. All right? So they're going to pass the book. And they know that, so they're fine with taking this one. That's why we look for New Zealand's and Aussies in the London's and the New York session. Right? We got to close in reverse, so you know their their agenda is still in play. The agenda is still in play. Break this bounce point. <clears throat> now, we were aware of the bounce point, and that's why we moved our stop. All right? Now, it's already been taken out, so we can just dash this. But this is what my friend Greg Michalowski said, calls a remembered line. They remember this line. They remembered it here. It was remembered here because over here. It was remembered here because over there. That's, they remembered that line. And so we went and got it. See, that's what you got to do. You got to be an information gatherer. If you didn't know that line was there, you might have taken a trade right into it. And then you, then it bounced up uh, or, you know, it's builded. You got wicked in. Nothing new about a wick. Uh, and the wick is going to happen to you all the time. But when it doesn't happen, the trade goes and you make a lot of pips. Right? So you understand that. Uh, yes, it would be in this case. Why? Because the big boy, remember, only the big boys can create clothes and reverses, all right? So only big boys can do that, institutional traders. So they're doing that, all right? But it's still on at the bounce point. So the break of the bounce point would be a significant piece of information that they are, they, they are sending out to all the traders. Remember, they're talking to all the traders of the charts. And today, we are on the right side of the order flow, and we are listening. <laughs> oh yeah, they'll have 55 pips, I think, pretty sure. But it doesn't matter because it's their trade up here is 55 pips. Uh, yeah, easily 55 pips right there. They right there at the way. So they got 55 pips. So a break, hook, and go, and you got more than 55 pips to the downside. It's right there. 
So they'll have only 53, but what they'll do is they'll come right back up to it. They'll hit that 55. Uh, we're not interested. We're not interested in a break, hook, and go with this blue line. Right. So we're hanging with this trade here. All right. We got a we got a little gem working, and it's talking to us. And my job, I'm the translator right now. All right. And there'll be people in here going, you know, I speak better language than that. He's he just said the wrong word. That's fine. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, well, I, I had a restaurant. Uh, hey, Larry, I had a restaurant uh, in the Alp. It's called the Alpine Inn. If you remember skiing in Mount Cranmore, when you came to the base of the mountain, there was the Alpine Inn. And that's where my restaurant was. Yeah, I may have actually served you. Yeah, you were there. See, I may. You may have actually come in my restaurant. Didn't even know. I didn't know you. You didn't know me. Small world, yeah. <clears throat> Coincidentally, my one of my best friends, um, she's a little younger than I, but uh, I used to live in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, I went to elementary school there. And uh, when I went to elementary school, she actually went to that elementary school. Her dad was stationed at Davis Monthan Air Force Base. So we went to elementary school. She was six years younger so I didn't pay any attention to her because I was a big sixth grader and she was a first grader <laughs> but, uh, yeah I had a catch is good I hate skiing in the east though once you learn to ski in the west it's just ice city over there as you see they're trying to push through this line see they're trying to go Watch for the break, hook, and go. Yeah. Oh, okay, good for you. I rarely did. Of course, when I lived there, I traded, I skied in all those conditions, mostly ice, <laughs> except for the days we got snow during the night. Then that was a great day. But other than that, Uh, we'll hang through and see if we get pushed through here and then we'll close it down, but we should see if we get it pushed through here. Yeah. Minus 60. Of course, you know, Mount Washington has the coldest uh, on record and it does it every year, Mount Washington, which is just north of North Conway. And the old man of the mountain fell down. Uh, it was a famous tourist place. Uh, it was a natural thing. It looked like an old man. And it fell down. Mm. Uh, well, right now, there have been, yeah. So that could be the problem right there. Depends on whether they're going to stay correlated or not. Typically, they're correlated and go with it, right? But lately, they've been doing the opposite, right, Bill? So, you know, we have even had, we have consternation about that. Right? I don't really know. Well, it's not doing what it normally does, you know. So this is the typical correlation, right? Pound New Zealand, half the time it goes with the... Uh, Dollar half the time it goes against it. Euro New Zealand, pound New Zealand, uh, Aussie, Euro Aussie go with it. So we watch those typically. But lately they've been going the opposite. And Larry's the guy who figured that out. And he said, you know what I found is that when dollar is going up and, and gold is going up, that's when they go opposite, all right? Uh, opposite the correlation. All right, so they they lock in on gold. That actually makes sense because gold. Uh, Australia is a big producer of gold, so that makes total sense from that standpoint. But today, now we got dollar coming down and pound coming down. 
I mean, gold going down and oil coming down. Oh, it's down to 90, went down to $90 a barrel. Might be a day to go fill up your car. Uh, I filled up my car yesterday for $3.70. So not too bad considering where we've been. All right, so got another piece. This is information, piece of information. I didn't know this. Larry's the one to figure that out. Good for Larry. Right? So now they may have trouble because that gold is going down, dollars going down. All right? So that's a piece of information. Right? You know, Ozzy, yeah, it is a poll. And they're, they're waiting. They're not, they see, they're not moving with this at all. This movement is not happening for them. They're waiting till they know what the dollar's doing. Should be the same on the euro New Zealand. Yep, same thing on the euro New Zealand. See that? Till they know what the dollar's doing, they're, they're on the sidelines. Right? So out of all the currencies that we had an opportunity, we were looking for one or two. And guess what? We found the one right, right there. Out of 20 currencies, this is the only thing that's really moving, been moving, and we we're in it. See? Good deal. All right, so they're pushing through again. Watch for the break, hook, and go. Get a break, hook, and go. Enter again with your two positions below there. And if it goes to target, you're going to be really happy. All right? So what did I do? I got a break even, break even, 70 pips and uh, 50 pips. Sweet. And maybe a market order on break hook of 75. So how would I? Yeah, that's how you'd put it in on Monday. Learned a lot on this trade. We learned a lot watching this trade. You see, what was, what was talking to us? The candles were whispering to us. The only thing that changes on this chart are candles. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly right, Bill. Uh, so what are we doing? We're watching candles. We're, we're letting the candles talk to us. Uh, are the, uh, have they been talking to us? Have they been? All right. Anybody in again? Daniel, you in again? Yep, good for you. There you go. See, see how the chart told you what to do. It says exactly what to do. Dean's in. Okay, so we got another live trade there. Uh, two live trades on here, and it's working pretty well now. See, now they now they get this out of the way. So now we can go. Yeah. Uh, okay, so break, hook. And we're in the go. All right. So now I got this big barrier out of the way. We broke it decisively now. And, uh, you know, uh, trade one is there. Trade two is there, 55 pips. Trade three is down here below that one right there. We might get this to target. It'd be nice if this would go all the way to target in the next 10, 15 minutes so that we could, uh, we'd actually have a live trade that I could break it down into one piece, one little piece, and show everybody how to trade a live trade to the downside. So, I'm kind of hoping that happens here. I always like to have those because, um, you know, they help people. That's all there is to it. They help traders. And it's a pain in the neck for me to have to go cut up the video and edit it. But that's what we do. That's what we do. There's 24, 23, 23. You may got licked in. 22. There we go. Bang. 22, 21, all right, now we can go. Okay, back over to the New, <coughs> New Zealand, as you see our next trade went in there, 22, and just shy of the target now, you can see we're, we went down to 95, our target is 91, so we, we're just shy of it right now, just by, oh, eight pips is it. So what do you do at this point in time? Uh, you, your stop, we're eight pips away, so we're nine pips away. All of our stops have to be nine pips. All these trades that are still in have to be nine trades, okay? Nine pips. Now, some of us got stopped out up here. We moved the break, break even and it popped up and took us out for break even. Some of us didn't get that. So we got one, two, three, four, five positions to the downside uh, maximum so far. And <clears throat> we are just shy of taking this target out just by a couple of pips, as you can see, in uh, 97, 98, and we're going to 91. So uh, there's a great example of a, of a trade, uh, how to trade it all the way down using multiple, uh, multiple entries, uh, some cases three, some cases four, some cases five. And we even have one trader took the close and reverse up here to the downside. So he's got an even bigger one uh, trade there. 
So there you go. If it got, <clears throat> pops back up and stops you out, all right, you got all of it, but those uh, nine pips, it goes to target and you want to go very close and maybe it'll break on through, go down the next one. We'll see what happens as we this continues to go along. All right, talk to you later, everybody. Have a great day.